back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek hey. break, and just talk about some of the things that we found personally going on in the world of Linux. Found them entertaining. We hope you find them entertaining as well. I am Vin. Mm -hmm. That is Joe Bryant. And the man on the far right there is one Pedro <laughs> Mateus. And everyone joining us live. Um, how's yeah. everybody doing? Everybody having a good time? Good day? Yes. Good afternoon? Yes. Good evening? Yes. It was a chilly day, which was really nice because everyone in the office cranked up the heaters and I went outside. It's like, ha, 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 ha. so good. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, have they finally? Uh, you're in the single digits. It's like no more window for you. Yep. Um, <laughs> Pretty much I'm at the point where you can't open the window. It's everyone in the office like bundles up next to me. It's like. Oh, <laughs> well, Jill, you're living in a place where it just stays the same temperature year round. So we're not worried yeah. about the weather. What's new? <laughs> well, it's been, it was a good, good morning, but I did fire up the heater a little bit. I always do when it, this time of year, cause it gets damp, um, overnight. So it, it cleans out the dampness, <laughs> the little nip, <laughs> So, <laughs> but yeah, so I uh, I have something cool in the world of Linux happening next week, but I'm not going to announce it yet till next week. So that'll be fun. <gasps> <A> giant tease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man! So I'm just full. Of, this is my dread face. <laughs> like legit. Oh, hello, Keanu Reeves. How are you? Uh, <laughs> oh, that was great. Yes, dude. Um, I got some advanced network equipment incoming, and mm -hmm. I it's smarter than I am. I am genuinely not looking forward to it. It's one of those purchases mm -hmm. where I was genuinely going, why am I doing this to myself? But it's going to help sort some things here, which turns out is really going to help sort some things because I got some interesting news this morning when I was like, what's the racket and the fuss outside? Well, it turns out... Um, one of the additional things I've done is, you know, we got some of that hot Doxus 3.1 action coming on the network, nice. hopefully later this afternoon. And we were joking around lovingly, um, Jordan and I. It's like, well, he's like, hey, man, we've been having some connection issues. It's like, well, you know, I could get like the latest and greatest modem and all that. And he's like, well, you know, you know what happened if you do that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> Wouldn't do it for me, but we do it for the show because we don't need dropouts when we're live or anything like that. So that showed up today. But this morning, to get back to that, yeah, AT&T was dragging their happy fiber trucks and putting them <laughs> outside and lining that Yay. up. So I, I, I still see this as a win. Gosh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's there now. <laughs> Whether or not you two. can use it something else entirely, but it's there now. <laughs> Hopefully before the eventual heat death of the universe, because yes. you do read the horror stories of like, yes, they did that. I immediately went to the internet and I'm like, hey, like, yeah, they did that a few years back. It's still sitting there. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get <laughs> right into it this week. Yeah. He says, uh, XPS 13 developer edition portfolio up to eight times in the state, six core and more. Uh, just good news. This is from Barton's blog. And most, but not all of these are just new models that are going to be available, not just in the States, but to our brothers and sisters in Canadian land mm -hmm. and EU. One thing I saw that uh, some of these new models no longer, it might be a sad day. They're no longer equipped with nose cam. Boo. So, no, no, no. Yeah. The 9370 mm -hmm. and the 9380 have the camera like on the teeny tiny bit of the bezel at the top. Yeah. I mean, keep that in mind. I mean, if you're a fan of having, you know, any type of video conferencing going straight up your nostrils, these new, new XPSs will not provide that feature. But <laughs> they're going to be shipping with Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, which makes perfect sense mm -hmm. to me. But only up to 16 gigabytes of memory RAM. And I think that's especially a little bit. On the low yeah, side, because at definitely. the end of the day, what's that? Like three electron apps? I mean, <laughs> on a lucky day, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the the one thing that the new XPSs uh, also have is uh, no type A USB port. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about picking one up. It's all type C all the time. Uh, and one of the things I tried, because he posted a link to the 
like all of the options you can have if you're trying to configure an XPS for yourself. And okay, so the i5 model that it's a quad core eight thread, and the i7 is the same thing with the um, ten series CPUs, uh, and sixteen gigs of RAM, and wait, it said plus a hundred dollars. Why is it two hundred and fifty dollars more expensive? Oh, it changed to the i7. Why can't I have the i5 with sixteen gigs of RAM, Dell? That seems like a pretty arbitrary yeah. limitation, if uh, for being mm. honest. I mean, it's glaringly obvious that you're doing that for the money, but come on. <laughs> you got to think about that, though, man. Um, it's not like you can go over 16 on any model. That just seems like a weird limitation for a, a yeah. laptop and coming up on 2020, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, 32 uh, laptop is SO kind of standard dims, now. Yeah. Uh, laptop yeah. SO dim slots, they're, most of them seem to be pretty limited, and uh, all they take is like 8 gig. Unless mm. you have a really high end laptop, at which point they'll take 16 gig uh, DIMMs. But yeah, it, it's been a thing since mm. DDR3, and I guess it's cheaper to make them that way. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> yeah, and you know, what was really cool was Barton George was talking about how Project Sputnik is almost seven years old. Uh, that's that's amazing. You know, we we the original XPS thirteen system came with Ubuntu twelve point oh four LTS. Wow, it's yeah, it's been that long ago. <laughs> and those original systems, XPSs yeah. are like the second yeah. hand ones are still very expensive. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> it's always good to have and just good on Dell for continuing with our Linux support and expanding mm -hmm. it. So yes, yep. very happy mm -hmm. about that. Your favorite desktop and soon to be your best favorite distribution, kind of, because somehow <laughs> KDE is not a distribution, but it is. It is. I mean, it's technically based on 1804, but mm -hmm. it, yeah, KDE Neon is, is its own thing very much. And well, the fine folks at KDE of going, uh, they have been trying to improve things because I guess they are aware that uh, things don't work very well in some aspects of KDE and they're doing something to fix it. And we talked about them like focusing mm -hmm. on three uh, new things to try and fix. And one of those things was consistency. And part of that new focus on consistency, they're changing uh, the highlight bar, which is that little blue highlight that you can see there. And now it will look the same no matter where you are. It'll be the semi-transparent version. So that, you, that will be unified. Mm -hmm. That they've pretty much decided on, and they're going to be implementing it. The other thing that they're um, trying to focus on with this is the navigation bars down the side. You have the little icons down the side to like the, indicate the different tabs, uh, like the settings, for instance, or if you have actual tabs uh, in um, in a terminal or something. Well, they want to unify everything to make sure that everything has a consistent look and that the icons all look similar if they are supposed to be for similar menus and to do similar things then they need to work on that they're still taking in suggestions for that so they haven't reached like a consensus on what those sidebars should look like but they are working on it mm. that seems a bit i don't know superfluous to be uh, working on that when there are some far more glaring issues with kde itself right now but hey what Progress. are you talking about? I mean, I mean, it could be like the GNOME project. And, but hey, the, <laughs> they're working on... It's something I honestly, let's be honest, I don't care. I use XFC, man. Um, there was a post earlier about XFC. It's like, this new dark theme for 14 is really coming along. And it's like, how does it work with Thunder Chicken? And it's like, yeah, it looks diseased too. Yeah, that's my problem <laughs> with dark themes. Um, yeah. <laughs> this Jill, do you pay attention to any... Like consistency type things. I've come through, you know, you think yeah. like early <laughs> days of like using GTK versus QTFs, man. There were some radically different looking applications you could have <laughs> open at one time. Oh, T TK. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was another one. Yeah. <laughs> looking at your and Netscape Navigator. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't really, you know, I'm I'm with Ben. I don't really so much care about the, the, um, consistency of the desktop because I usually theme them myself anyways <laughs> but but for KDE it really needed that um to you know also be competitive with gnome in, in that area cuz gnome is you know definitely uh unifying their interface as well so 
Hmm. It's definitely needed. <laughs> I'm down with that. Uh, yeah. Up next. Oh, right. Remember how we were talking about how great it was <laughs> that the media sharing worked yes. out of the box with the latest Ubuntu? Well, it turns out uh, it worked out just a little bit too well. Yeah. So, so yeah, the Ubuntu 1910 <laughs> DNLA media server we talked about last week wasn't completely baked yet, baked yet and has a major bug. It could be automatically sharing the contents of your pictures, videos, and music folders with other users on the same network, even if media sharing is turned off. Ooh, <laughs> not good. So the Rigel media server, which is supposed to be disabled by default, auto starts on login. And on the, on the computer last week, I was doing a, um, a test on was a laptop, and I sudo apt get removed Rigel on my Ubuntu 1910 a test machine just to make sure the folders aren't visible by default. So that's something they that you can do. Um, and there's also, of course, they're they're working on fixing this, so a a, fi a full fix will be out soon. And um, for me, this was uh, actually very important to fix because I use other window managers usually. I don't use GNOME, and uh, so the um, because this was auto starting, it didn't matter what what window manager or desktop environment you were using, it would auto start and share. So I just went ahead and uninstalled it, and, and it actually, you know, it didn't it didn't really matter too much because me and Steve husband are the only ones who share the network in this house, and he wouldn't even notice anyways. <laughs> Ooh, shade. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm just going to say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the magical world of just works. Because you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is something we're definitely going to be jamming with um, <laughs> to my brothers and sisters out there on university yeah. campuses. Get snooping. You know what I'm saying, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you see someone with that uh, purple and orange background, you fire up whatever internet uh, thing you have going on. And you go looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but I mean, hey, man, this is one of the beautiful things about Linux. Oh, there's Nuke it from Orbit. And you don't have to. Yeah. Like, oh, are there any parts <laughs> of it lingering around in this? Nope. Yep. yep. And yep. that is the one thing you can do right now. It's just, yeah, the only way to get it to not auto start is to remove it. Yeah. It seems a bit nuclear, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair. I mean, with. Like, 1804 is not bad, but there's definitely a list of things with the recent Ubuntu's that I would have in my <laughs> launching of, yeah, like, let's remove it, this. Yeah. With this bit of a screw up, I hopefully not a whole lot of people use the uh, the interim releases and they stick to the LTSs because, yeah, hmm. that, that, that's not good. <laughs> Six reasons why developers choose Ubuntu desktop. It's not because oh. of what we just got done talking about. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that is most certainly not a reason. So, um, Mark Shuttlesworth uh, actually wrote a white paper, and you, you just have to give him your name, uh, first name, last name, work email, company name, job title, phone number. Yeah, zero one two three four five works. If you're wondering, uh, and you read it and you go through it, and I have the PDF. If anyone is interested, I'll send it to you. Uh, and one of the reasons that he listed as to why Ubuntu is so popular with developers was Snaps. Really? <laughs> snaps? From what I can tell, they're not very popular. The, the general opinion on the internet seems to be that app images are like the darlings of uh, most people who are actually putting software Whatever. out there. Whatever. Snaps. With, with, with your app and <laughs> Team Flatpak. <laughs> I like flat bikes too. This is yeah. Linux, but yeah. but baby, we gotta pick a team and stick with it for no no reason whatsoever. Come on. Let's do yeah, it. I'm team anti-snap very much. <laughs> uh, and the only ones pushing snaps are canonical and Ubuntu employees. So Well, that would make sense since they were the ones that brought it into existence. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. listen, yeah. man, call me a conspiracy <laughs> theorist, but I see a connection. But they're the only ones. That's the thing. Because and even wait a minute, wait a minute. Hear, hear me out, though. But now, I think there might be another connection with the guy who created the company. <laughs> Say, hmm. I'm just saying that him <laughs> including this as one of the reasons that Ubuntu is so popular with developers. It it's tooting one's own horn. 
I'm just saying, man, like your red wool shirt of red yarn is boring, okay? There is no yarn. It's like you're tooting your own horn. That's it. Well, if I say so myself, man. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, well, So snaps aside, um, ever since Canonical CEO Mark Shuttleworth announced last May that there has been an increase in support contracts for Ubuntu desktop for AI development and engineering, I have actually seen an increase in their desktop marketing. This is wonderful, you know, to me for the growth of the Linux desktop and shows that Canonical is putting much more money and emphasis on the desktop. And yeah, as we've talked about this before on LWW, that one of the key factors needed for the growth of the Linux desktop is to put money into its marketing. So like that of Google with Chrome OS. So having... Um, a white paper titled Six Reasons Why Developers Choose Ubuntu Desktop uh, proves this, and um, it's only going to help with the, the growth of the desktop, and that's something we definitely need. Oh, I <laughs> get thing, like man. the business side of why they did it. <laughs> yeah. Business side or not, man, <laughs> Ubuntu's been around for the long, long year, and it's mm -hmm. legitimately, if somebody's like, what should I target? Guess what I'm going to tell them, Ubuntu. Why? It's a known quantity. You know what you're going to get. And most yeah. importantly, we know how to back engineer. It's like, oh, it works on Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know what I need to do to get it to work on X, Y, or Z. That's another reason. Yeah. And, you know, developer, I mean, they, they're seeing most of their growth in the cloud market. I hate using that term, but hey, let's, that's what they said, the cloud. And that, mm -hmm. again, on server side, you can make that argument for snaps. And I'm like, okay, that makes mm -hmm. sense. But on the desktop. Mm -hmm. I'm just not feeling it yet. Changed my mind. Uh, AMD. Good news, mm -hmm. everyone. Speculate. Ah, the mainstream media has once again paid attention to uh, a kernel. <laughs> Update. <laughs> Dude. Um, Navi light drivers have been spotted in the wild. WCCF tech, so spin the wheel of bugger bug on this. Uh, they were spotted in the Linux driver update. And not just your regular run-of-the-mill Navi. No, this was navi light so yeah this just kind of showed up and there it is look addr navi mm -hmm. 23 build mm, what is it i don't know what i want is something that will give um nvidia a run for their money on the top end this is probably not going to be it but there it is chip hdr navi 21 light pedro is this going to be a fast one or a slow one a desktop part is it going to be made entirely of cheese <laughs> it could be made of cheese for what we know at this point but it is uh, if you join <laughs> these uh bits of information with the rumors that have been going on apparently amd is going to be releasing two new um like targets for uh their desktop gpus one on the lower end to compete with like the 1650 1660 so on and so forth and on the high end to compete with the 10 uh, the 2080 ti and because right now they have a very good mid-range the 5700 and the 5700 xt have been i think in five or it's been longer than that. It's been longer than five years. It's been a long time since uh, AMD was competitive at like the medium to high end uh, of the desktop mm -hmm. GPUs and the 5700s actually do a very good job of it. So I am curious to see if they have something like for the low end that will completely destroy the 1650 and doesn't require an extra PCIe power connector. That's what oh, I want to see. Okay. <laughs> and very made good. of cheese. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> say what you say about the 5700 and the XTs they can't print them fast that's how you make video no. games you have to print them on inkjets that's how it works <laughs> but that, that good or bad you know they can't keep them in stock and I think that's brilliant now that they're you know even uh, at least this is going to be this is a new RDNA 2 type stuff but mm -hmm. the roadmap for Ryzen's kind of taped out and all that. So do you think they're going to be able to shift some of that money over there uh, for the radiant technology? I really screen? hope so. Mm -hmm. I really hope so because yeah. right now AMD has the money to take some of that uh, income from the CPU side and invest in the radiant technologies group, mm -hmm. which has been a bit lacking in the past few years. I think for <laughs> me is I, I would like to, uh, I know it's not going to happen, but a boy can still wish is they'll do some work on their video encoding engine because 
Yeah, that needs mm-hmm. all the work. <laughs> that, that's how you sell yeah. me. That is, it, it's rubbish right now. It's poorly documented too. After the, um, I'm not, I'll spare you that rabbit hole. Um, and that's how mm-hmm. Nvidia sells me a card now. Yep. It's like when they come up with Ampere, they're like, it can it can do backflips now. And I'm like, geez, all right, fine, I'll buy another one. Um, <laughs> It's kind of brilliant. So yeah. I know we've all been stuck in a situation that where bandwidth was like a legit concern. Mm-hmm. Either you just had poor connectivity or you had like 500K <laughs> left on your uh, account before, your allowance. You, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. before you got throttled <laughs> more. This might help mm-hmm. me out. Yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it, it will actually very much help. This is Web Snapper, uh developed by Phil294, and it's available on GitHub. And what it does is exactly what it says on the tin. It strips out anything uh that is considered superfluous, and all it gives you is basic text with some hyperlinks for whatever URLs happen to be embedded in the text. And you can set the um you can run the server locally. There's a Docker image. It's actually pretty easy to run it. The, mm-hmm. He gives you everything you need to know. And then you get the most basic of uh, web experiences. One thing that uh, I very much appreciated was if you scroll all the way down, there's a section called Enable JavaScript. For JavaScript mm-hmm. to work, remove this line. And there's a, uh, a hyperlink there. You click on it, and it points you exactly at the line that you need to comment out or to change the value to, oh, oh, you actually. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did to test it. I used linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, linuxgamecast.com looks like when run through web snapper. Barely done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it, it's like e-links or links for modern browsers. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's like running console <laughs> web browsers, <laughs> but it, that that's awesome because there's you know time when you have very little bandwidth and that'll come in handy. <laughs> I mean, those days are long since gone. But when I see something yeah. like that, I'm not immediately <laughs> shocked because I remember you know dial-up days. Yes, get off my lawn time. Is having images disabled was absolutely something like, you did, and JavaScript yeah. really wasn't a thing back then. So I'm like, yeah. Well, I mean, there's. Yeah, so there's still places in in the U.S. that are using dial-up, so this this is, could be beneficial for them. Could be. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but maybe the dial-up lines will go down, and it'll be the end of civilization as we know it, and we'll need an operating system to help us return to mediocrity as a humanity. I really don't know where I'd go with that, man. Well. Collapse OS, something we've talked Yay. about in our Discord before, but this is for mm-hmm. when the fecal matter hits the rotating device, which is not a band name, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so what will Collapse OS help you do? Um, it's designed to run a minimal improvised machines, interface through improvised means, serial keyboard display. You can edit text files, compile a simpler source with a wide range of MCUs and CPUs, read and write from a wide range of storage devices, and it self-replicates. All right, brother, you're mm-hmm. trying to make me do Skynet. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, Skynet on a mega drive. So this is kind of like laser aimed at the Z80, though, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that was introduced to compete with Intel's 8080 but way back when, but I guess uh, the author of this is like, yo. It's plentiful, and it's something that's probably still stamped out today in some shape, form, or fashion. What are our thoughts on this, Pedro? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the thing about Collapse OS and the way that uh, <laughs> the article not so much, but the way uh, the author of uh, Collapse OS describes it, it requires a very specific kind of disruption. And uh, I know Jordan uh, brought up this point, but yeah, it, it is very specific. Yes, we may be headed uh, it, down that particular path, especially with, you know, the trade wars going on in between the US and China. Most of our electronics are made in China. So if you cut the US out of it, a lot of tech companies are based in the US. So all of a sudden there's a bit of friction there and I can see the motivation behind creating something like this, but it's still very unlikely to happen in a way that would make the Z80s of all processors Mm -hmm. the best viable Mm -hmm. option. 
it, it, okay, <laughs> Mega Drives, yeah. they're still being stamped out. But if you want to move the like major computational production from China to Brazil, yeah. That, that's a very good way to do it. <laughs> yeah, and I agree with Pedro. As much as I have nerd rage for the 780 chip chipset, I think i386 or newer might be the better option because they are just so much more plentiful. But when the zombie apocalypse comes, I will be prepared because I have every computer part and chipset represented in my computer collection, including a trashy 80 and a ZX Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, we got a zombie apocalypse, man. There's a lot of people not going to be useful anymore. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that it just like mm -hmm. really reminds me of like, I love stuff like intellectually. I like stuff like this, but mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. argued with a law professor once time because I pick arguments with law professors. Um, I was like, yo, he, he had a thing. He's like, if you're going to be doing your research, you have to go to the law library. And that's a ginormous pita, man as opposed to just pulling it up online through the system designed mm -hmm. to do that. There's like three systems to do it when you're in middle school. And it's like, why are you making them do that? It's like, what if the <laughs> internet goes down? It's like, listen, man, um, call me crazy. But I think if the internet goes down, the world's got bigger problems. Like when that happens, like technology, law, Probably not going to be a big factor in Mad Max world because that's no. like 30 minutes after that happens. Yeah. Yeah. The moment the internet goes down, law goes out the window. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. You know, if you would have said that a decade ago, I'd be like, you're being a little silly. But the longer that progresses, you think about all of your financial transactions, you can't buy anything. Everything. Right? Your job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna be a thing, man. I'll be, I'll, I'll be in here by myself. I'm like, hey, hello. I'll get, uh, oh, we can go Cartman. I can get like a little Clyde Frog. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. got yourself an IRL plank. <laughs> It'd be great, man. We'll, we'll just make shot of us. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I, I actually do think we really seriously do need to think about this. Um, it is, you know, important for for um, us here on Earth and. The future of the human race. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, we do have projects like the Forever Clock. Um, that's amazing. That will last for thousands of years. And why not an OS? <laughs> so, well, okay, by all means, like... create an, o an OS for something like that. But this but one, this one set. is yeah. very specific. It could be different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I was looking at it just numbers wise, Android is probably your best bet because you think about how many hundreds of millions of Android devices will just always yeah. exist. Good, Go good look in a few idea. drawers in your yeah. house. You probably have three or four. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, like future building and stuff, like that, I remember watching mm -hmm. a uh, documentary where they were trying to design a radiation warning sign for people 10,000 years in the future because they're like, Yo, yeah, this waste is still going to be there when somebody runs across this is the skull and crossbones what's that going to communicate in 10,000 years like it might not so that's a very interesting intellectual yeah ex yeah. thought experiment to just kind of roll through but yeah uh when you go mad max man all this is pff, just let it go so yeah yeah get the yeah, chainsaw like, like steve husband was saying the long now foundation that, that that's really fascinating what they're doing with the forever clock and some other projects it's really amazing <laughs> OpenSource.com had a uh, little article about six remarkable features uh, of the new United Nations. Yeah. So, you know, I put this article in the show notes. I was, this is just amazing. The United Nations is going open source. Um, and this is just so wonderful. And I w wanted to really happen. They're still in talks about it and nothing has been written yet, but they're, They've already gone a long way to, to secure using open source so software. So three months ago, the United Nations created a new advisory board to help them develop their open source strategy and policy. And open source software aligns with the UN's core values to make technology, software, and intellectual property available to everyone, including developing in third world countries. And the United Nations... 
um, formed the United Nations Technology Innovation Labs just for this purpose. And it until like, yeah, yeah, work that into yeah. a sentence. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's why I, I just I just <laughs> I said I said it spelled it out because I <laughs> yeah until so um, and there were six key reasons why the UN wants to utilize open source software: the ability to share, the ability to contribute, empower, sustainability, security, and decentralization, and. Uh, as all of us know in the open source world, uh, this is one of the reasons why many, many reasons why we love open source. So, this this makes sense that it aligns with their values. So yeah, really it, awesome. it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I for mm -hmm. one hope that uh, they're doing more than the bare minimum of just putting together you know a little advisory group and say yeah look at us we <laughs> care about open source we're uh, paying those six people to sit in an office and tinker around with stuff as we get business done and we just tick that box because that's what it's looking like right now How i, I hope i'm wrong accuse the <laughs> i hope i'm wrong of being an ineffectual thing that it's always been yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that. anyway it, it's the thought that counts and i think that's really neat mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah we one thing linux needs is a new web browser and microsoft's determined to give it to us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see i took a lot of curse words and rephrased them into what i just said yes you did <laughs> So, uh, Microsoft's Chromium-based Edge browser is indeed officially coming to Linux very soon, and it was just announced at their Ignite 2019 conference in Orlando. And, you know, last month we had talked about Edge coming to Linux, and Microsoft developers asked the community to take a short web development on Linux survey that asked everything from what distro you use for web development and testing to what you use web browsers on Linux for. And obviously, the results of the survey must have been um, well enough that Microsoft felt that developers would like it for testing on Linux and that users would use it. <laughs> well, I mean, so. I don't even think Microsoft, when we all saw that, we like, it's, it's going to take them a minute. But, you know, they just yeah. might be able to find a way to make Chromium not work on Linux. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, the, even yeah. if they had tried that, I know for a fact that the community being, you know, the community would have figured out a way to take the Microsoft stuff and just put yeah. it into regular Chromium just to see. Yes. And there would be an <laughs> unofficial uh, a fork of the um, the new Chromium-based Edge browser. But yeah, mm. no, I don't think anyone at this point had any doubts that this was coming. And exactly. if you specifically did, you haven't been watching the show. Yeah. Just say. <laughs> it's. And I. Go on. Yeah, it's just the last bit. It's. It takes a while to build your own telemetry BS on top of the uh, the Blink engine. Mm -hmm. So if you strip out all of the Google stuff, you then have to build your own. So I, I'm guessing that's what taking what's taking the Listen, longest. Listen, man, you want me to use <laughs> Linux, but I'm lonely. I don't feel like I'm being tracked properly by my operating system. So at least let me have this on Linux. Yeah. To I'll, Android. I'll, I'll feel more at home. No, but it needs to be Microsoft. <laughs> we we can't get Windows users to come over like cold turkey. They're like, but I'm not being tracked enough. Yeah, I don't think Edge yeah. is going to be the killer feature to bring Windows users to Linux. Listen, man, it's their comfort browser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm probably not the best person to get uh, converts over, but hey, that's a story for another time. We're about to jump into that. A uh, little bit of shameless self promotion. Uh, if mm -hmm. you want to support what we do each and every week, uh, four or five days a week, it's kind of brilliant. You can do that by heading over to linuxgamecast.com. Mm -hmm. We got a support thingy mousey over button maybe yes patreon, i like the technical pay, language we merch we got <laughs> paypal wish list magic internet money all of you mm -hmm. uh are kicking in to help make this weird little experiment possible it helps us pay for the show bandwidth and new stuff to bring you better and bigger awesome sauce jill we got some returning patreons this week yes we do admiral jt who we've known for a very long time <laughs> jonas 
And <laughs> Lennox Gnuru, although he wasn't gone, for, he just he just switched to a different tier. I wish I knew how to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I still wonder which of the Jonas brothers uh, Jonas is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was uh, logged into Cloudflare. It might have been earlier this m Well, probably was this morning. I don't sleep. Uh, cutting them their cheddar check. And I'm like, here, have, have some cash on us. And they were showing the geo map. And there was one person from Tanzania. And mm -hmm. my only thought was, found your laptop, bro. Yeah. We got a couple guys. of things set up on top of that. If you're ever curious about what we run here, this amalgam, yeah. this nightmare train that I've stuck together to broadcast all on Linux on all ends, you can check out our little Amazon store page thingy, more technical terms. That's covering all the displays, PC hardware, video, audio, lighting, storage even down to electric and networking, which I'm going to have to update probably with do not mm -hmm. buy, but everything there has been tested, is working in here. There's no guessing because a lot of that stuff I picked up going, mm, let's find <laughs> out. Uh, Amazon's really good about that though. So if it doesn't work out, you can ship it back to them. Oh, we got affiliate links and stuff like that. So if mm -hmm. you want to go check those out, mm -hmm. uh, if you're curious about things we're planning on buying you're like don't buy that that's a stupid thing <laughs> you can check out our studio wish list this is stuff that's going to happen new series coming up uh, about some high-end podcasting and all that stuff uh mm -hmm. just yeah really expensive stuff that it, let's not look at that page right now i don't <laughs> <laughs> that is the page of one day that that's one the day. page yeah. of, uh, okay <laughs> you want to help out with that you end up on frank's wall name in the credits all that beautiful stuff thanks each and every one of you for making this possible Aww. keep being sexy you know you. yeah we love you <laughs> so tis the season I was going to put a Rick and Morty mm. picture, but ah. that's something else that happens in November is yes. pies covered in whipped cream, cut poorly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I appreciate the whipped cream. I'm a big fan. But, yes. uh, well, if you want to be very, very disappointed in your life investments and you want, say, a bit of a display with a ticker that shows exactly Why would how much to yourself. Yeah, I don't know why, but some people do. And uh, this person decided, you know what? Let's put a uh, <laughs> Bitcoin value uh, ticker on a Raspberry Pi with a teeny tiny little uh, LCD display to show exactly how much it's worth, how much it's gone up, how much it's gone down. It's mostly going down nowadays, but hey. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it, that's all it does. It tracks the, uh, the currency. Uh, you could use... Whichever API you prefer, but the, they do provide you with a URL that you could just plug into this. And it has a little progress bar at the top, and it updates, and then runs the progress bar again, updates again. That's, it's a ticker. It's a financial ticker oh, cool. for magic internet money. <laughs> Listen, I think you did a very good job selling it. Um, <laughs> it ticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting thing to do. I mean, you know, I've seen projects like this that were like bandwidth monitors and stuff. It's, it's in that same vein. That's useful. Yeah. That, that That is useful. Or if you want to have like a USB thing that you plug into your PC and it gives you a little readout, the Raspberry Pi will do that too. It's like system load, uh, the process that's taking up like 100% of your CPU. You can have all of that on that very uh, same hardware. It's just that this particular person decided, you know what? Let's um, <laughs> let's see how much Bitcoin is worth on it, a it minute by minute me basis, time, though, man. Because the little, <laughs> uh, thanks to everyone who's kicked in a couple of MBTCs, I think that's correct mm -hmm. terms. I use it as an RNG of uh, seed. Oh yeah, it's a very good uh, hasher for yeah. like creating passwords oh. off of. <laughs> I mean, yeah. When I check it, it's always different, man. Um, <laughs> another piece of pie related news is uh, makes me feel like we're living in the future that we should have had like yeah. a decade ago. Oh yeah, this is something so awesome. This is PentaHub. PentaHub enables seamless remote Linux firmware updates over the air. 
Yay! Now you don't need to sneaker net your SD cards from your computer to your single board computer. Sneaker net? Do you mean more like walk around the house and look where you left it? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you don't have to, you know, uh, to image your your flashcards for your Raspberry Pi. You don't have to take it out and go to your your um, home computer and flash it and then bring it back again. You can remotely image your Raspbian OS on your Raspberry Pi's SD card to say Ubuntu 1910 or Android using the online Pentahub, Pentavisor, and PVR command line utilities. And what's really cool is I actually saw this demo at the OSS Summit in um, North America in San Diego uh, this past August and was really impressed by it. And it, it worked really well. I saw them do a Raspbian to Ubuntu and then a Raspbian uh, to Android. So it was really amazing and how quick it was too. So yeah, this is something I... I think someone should have thought about a long time ago, but I'm happy it's here. Oh, no, this is a, a <laughs> brilliant vector to load malicious yeah. stuff on people's equipment. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, and to your point there, Jill, someone already uh, did think of this a long time ago. Uh, they're called Intel, and they had oh, the yeah, management yeah, yeah. engine built into yeah, every single engine. one of their CPUs that did yeah. just this. Man, yeah. you walk over there and That's slap true. the PSP out of your well, mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, the PXE. Yeah, the PXE networking. But I, I mean with the That's single the same thing. Things. Yeah. It's another thing you get to disable. Um, yep. Then again, I mean, that's like what I brought up. I genuinely, I that was always the joke. You're like, I got an IP address for something in the house. Don't know where it's at. Um, yep. Yeah. The Raspberry Can you make Pi it beep? made that real. That quit being a joke. Like. 40 minutes after I got my first pie. Um, so, I really <laughs> that thing. so something like this could definitely be handy. Yeah. Maybe you don't lose pies, but you put them in good use and you want to tell us about it. Huh? <laughs> well, there is a very, yeah. very easy way you can do it. There's a even a little <laughs> button called contact on linuxgamecast.com that you click and it brings you to a form. You pick LWDW, fill out the form, and... Leave us your message. Tell us about your pie projects. Tell us about something that we got wrong or something that you'd <laughs> like us to expand on during the show. <laughs> if okay, you have pie. created, yes, <laughs> if you have uh, created something like really interesting, it doesn't necessarily have to be pie based as long as there's Why some are you Linux set to it. The bar like that and really, come on, <laughs> like moderately, like, okay, I'll take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, something that's moderately interesting. <laughs> Born salesman, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Literally anything at all. Or if you just like to comment on something that we said during the show, like uh, Orin decided to do this week, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he says, uh, you know, not to flex. Uh, I have more Twitter followers than Austin Pocus. Austin Pocus is the uh, author of that quote unquote article oh. we covered last <laughs> week about using linux yes uh when uh has pulse audio slash pavu control been hard for a basic to mid-advanced user who is not an audio engineer i mean heck i first installed pavu control back in 2012 on my uh foray back to linux on linux mint 13 and it was that easy then if a complete dunes like me could do it back in 2012 it would be a cinch for someone who <laughs> has used linux for 15 years uh, also, my first GNU uh, Linux was Red Hat Linux 8.0 back in the late 2002. I've decided that I dislike Austin Pocus from now on. That's reasonable. That, that, that I, I guess coming out of Orn, that is very reasonable. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. Very uh -huh. good, Orn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just not us you know, normally... I would shy away from something like that because we're like, oh, you're being made on the internet again. I'm like, no, I'm just being honest. Don't confuse <laughs> rudeness with honesty. But I think the rest of the internet read that and went, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you need to say about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> no one's going to discuss it. Nobody believed that. Man, come on. No, no, that, no that they don't. Be <laughs> a window. Uh, it's like, I, I'm, I'm going back to Linux after using Windows and be like, I found it amazing. No, don't take it away. And it's like, no, one, no one's buying that. Come on. 
I it's, it's, yeah. <sighs> it was clickbait to get views. I'm I don't. Sure. I, I no, no. <laughs> it, it it wasn't written clever enough to do that. Uh, no, okay, it wasn't. Yeah. And if you actually look, there's very little in the way of comments. So clearly, we were probably the highest profile outlet mm-hmm. that actually covered that particular article. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I hope you enjoyed twelve, possibly fourteen views. Then, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here. So we're gonna roll some credits. Thanks everybody for yeah. sh- sh- shooping by. Yay! Can we do that? Shooping, shooping by. Yay! <laughs> shoop, 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 shoop. Shoop high. Don't Linux bother me. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> then mints. Pedro. Joe? Call me by my Christian name, Joe. <laughs> okay, Ben Stone. <laughs> no, Matias. Christian one. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I thought that wasn't pronounceable in English. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yay, producers and executive producers, you make this all happen. Make the world go round. Love you. Even though it was yeah. going to do that anyway, it's all on you, though. Yeah. Yep. We love you. <laughs> Pedro's red yarn thanks you. <laughs> Brown? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs>